men Mr. Lorraine. So I'll just by way of reminder, our theme for the month is Standing in the Gap, for this Women's Month, Standing in the Gap. And for today, our special theme is prayer. And once again, we are going to invite Dr. Ray Kieses, who has been used by the Lord before to be a big blessing to us. And I have no doubt that the Lord will do it again for us this morning. So Dr. Ray Kieses, welcome and over to you. Thank you so much, Sister Belinda. I'm very, very grateful for this opportunity to come and share the word of God with you. Once again, I want to thank each and every one of you for being faithful in joining the prayer meeting. You know, every time I come in and look at the numbers in the Zoom and I say, I really praise God. You know, sometimes you will want, you will go preach at a place, a whole church, and you'll find that the Zoom meeting has 10 people, five people, but this is five in the morning and we have over 267 people online praying. We want to thank God for you. I want to encourage you and tell you that the Lord will bless you. God answers prayers. This morning, I will want us to look at this topic. What do you do after prayer, part two? What do you do after prayer, part two? Our dear Heavenly Father, make this simple and clear for all of us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Today, I'm sure many of you can notice that we are out of our usual sight because of assignments, but I believe that you can see me clearly and you can hear me clearly. What do you do after prayer? Before prayer, you are encouraged to pray. During prayer, you pour out your heart to God as to a friend. That's what you do before prayer. You are encouraged to pray. During prayer, you are encouraged to pour out your God, your heart to God as to a friend. That's what you do before prayer, and that's what you do during prayer. But what do you do after prayer? In part one of this series, we explained in detail that after prayer, you go in peace. And remember, we are also in a month that we are celebrating women, particularly in the Republic of South Africa. And so last week, we looked at one woman in scripture to help us understand what do you do after prayer. And so today, we are entering into the second part. What do you do after prayer? And once again, today, we are going to learn from another woman in the Bible on what we are supposed to do after prayer. The question we are answering is this, what do you do after prayer? In the book of Esther, chapter 4, verse 16, this is what the Bible says. The words of Esther, this is a woman, she's a Jew, she's a queen in a foreign land. And these are her words. She says, go and gather together all the Jews who are in Susa and fast for me. So there is praying here. Do not eat or drink for three days. And then it says, I and my attendants, says do not eat or drink for three days. I and my attendants will fast as you do. Then he says, when this is done after prayer, when this is done after prayer, remember the message is, what do you do after prayer? When this is done, I'm just right there. When this is done after the praying, after the fasting, after three days of fasting and praying, when this is done, I will go to the king, even though it is against the law. And then she says, if I perish, I perish. That is the message of the book of Esther that I want us to consider. Now, let me give you a little background. Haman was an enemy of the Jewish people. And through trickery, he had convinced the king to give an edict that would have all the Jews killed, including Mordecai, a cousin of Esther, and probably even Esther herself. And Mordecai sends a message to Esther and says, 
Esther, you are now the queen. You need to help us all Jews who are threatened by Mordecai and the edict from the king. And Esther was reluctant because it was dangerous to go and see the king, even when you are the queen, if you have no appointment. And so Esther was reluctant to go and see the king and save the Jewish people. And so Mordecai sends a threatening, a veiled threatening message to Esther and says, listen, God chose you for a purpose as a queen. And this could be the only purpose why you are the queen. And so rise up and to the occasion and save the Jewish people because this is the assignment that God has given you. Esther's fears is that if she approaches the king carelessly, without invitation, she would be killed. That was the problem that Esther had. And so Esther asks all the Jews and Mordecai that for three days, let us pray and fast. For three nights, let us pray and fast. Then Esther makes a powerful statement, a powerful statement that is going to inform our understanding of what do you do after prayer. Esther says that after prayer, she is going to meet the king and the risk she will not, will not matter at that time. The risk notwithstanding, she will see the king after prayer. Esther declares that after prayer, she will be ready for the will of God. After prayer, she will do what must be done. After prayer, she is ready to succeed. And if she perishes, she is ready to perish. It will be fine with her because after prayer, she will be ready for all this. Ladies and gentlemen, this morning, I just want to let you know that after prayer like Esther, just go to work. After prayer like Esther, take up the assignment that has been given to you. After prayer like Esther, act without fear. After prayer, engage in activities that will facilitate the answer to your prayer. If you are praying about something, then after prayer, rise up and go and get that prayer answered. After prayer, contribute what you can to answer your own prayer. What do you do after prayer? After prayer, go to work. What do you do after prayer? After prayer, take up the assignment. What do you do after prayer? After prayer, act without fear. What do you do after prayer? After prayer, engage in activities that will answer the prayer that you are making. What do you do after prayer? After prayer, do everything that will contribute to the answer to your prayer. What do you do after prayer is the question. What do you do after prayer? That is part two of our message. What do you do after prayer? After praying for, for protection from COVID-19, what are you supposed to do? Of course, you're supposed to wear your mask, you're supposed to sanitize, you're supposed to keep social distance, and you are supposed to get vaccinated where possible. What do you do after prayer? After prayer, you are supposed to pick up your phone after prayer and call or send a text and apologize without condition to the people that you hurt. That's what you are supposed to do after prayer. Don't just pray and say, God, I've had so many people have mercy on me. What do you do after prayer? Pick up the phone, dial their number, send a text and apologize. What do you do after prayer is the question we are asking today. After prayer, you are supposed to howl your lazy, sickly bones to school, to work, to your business. Because when you are always sleeping, oh, I'm sick, my back is aching, my head is not feeling okay, I'm feeling nauseated, and you are always praying about these things. Listen, after prayer, rise up from that bed. After prayer, take a good shower. After prayer, dress properly. In spite of all these feelings that you are having, after prayer, go to school if you are a student. After prayer, go to work. After prayer, go and engage in your business. What do you do after prayer? What do you do after prayer? After prayer, go to that failing business and give it your best one more time. What do you do after prayer? That's the question I just want us to ask. What do you do after prayer? 
after prayer, switch off the phone and that television and draw the curtains and study because you are ever distracted. You are ever distracted. Every small time you want to study, you first want to check social media, what people are saying before you read. Every time before you study, you want to check one more program on TV. Every time before you study, you want to do one more thing. Now, after prayer, put aside those things. Draw the curtains where you keep looking outside to see who is passing by. And sit down and start studying. That is what you are supposed to do after prayer. After prayer, you get into the business that you are supposed to get into. What do you do after prayer is the question. And that miserable relationship after prayer. You know that relationship is not going anywhere. You know the two of you are headed nowhere. You are not fit for each other. No church approves. No parent approves. Nobody approves after prayer and that miserable relationship. Pray. And after praying, pick the phone call and say, it is over. I will not call you and I will not pick your calls. Don't call me. I will not call you. And hang off and mean what you are saying. After prayer, immediately after prayer, call it off and move on. What do you do after prayer? After prayer, change your diet. After prayer, eat well per meal. After prayer, don't eat between meals. After prayer, engage in exercise. After prayer, enroll in a gym. After prayer, make up your mind to live a healthy life. What do you do after prayer? After prayer, engage in that which will contribute to the answer to your prayers. What do you do after prayer, my friends? Cancel all events that affect worship and communicate with the concern that you will, now, you will no longer be available because you will be attending to worship. You have been missing worship because of all flimsy reasons. What do you do after prayer? Make a phone call and say, from today henceforth, I will not take up assignments that will affect my worship. That's what you do after prayer. What do you do after prayer? Take action that contributes to the answer of your prayer. Esther was supposed to see the king to plead for the release of the Jews from the edict that was to kill them. And she said, let us pray for three days. So you also don't pray forever so that eventually you don't do anything. You're always praying, you're always praying, you're always praying. Pause after prayer and do something. Jesus prayed three times in Gethsemane and stood up and said, now those who are coming to arrest me are here. There is a point where you must face reality even after prayer. After prayer, Elijah said to the servant, look out there. When the servant said there is a cloud the size of a human fist, Elijah said, that's it. After prayer, let's deal with the situation. Let us run because the rain is coming here. Let me tell you, this business of praying, pray. if you pray without doing anything, soon you will stop praying because nothing will happen. You must do something to contribute to the answer to your prayers. What do you do after prayer? Like Esther, rise up to the occasion and say, I have prayed, now it is time to deal with the situation that is at hand. What do you do after prayer? Take action that contributes to the answer to your prayer. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we count it a great privilege that you have given us the privilege of prayer. We pray that as we seek you in prayer, we will also like Esther rise up to the occasion and deal with the situation that we must deal with that is at hand. If there is a conflict, address it. If there is a health issue, address it. If it, it is financial, draw a budget and deal with it. Teach us to be people of action after prayer. This is our prayer in Jesus' name, amen. Amen.